Coming to you live in stunning 160p resolution. It's time for Destiny Down Under. G'day and welcome to episode 81 of the Destiny Down Under podcast. I am Log Power Slave and as always, shut up. As always, I am joined by the fearless Mylon Games and the strong and honourable real-time sloth. Welcome, gentlemen. How are you doing? That was the nicest intro you've given, now, I I've think. turned over a new leaf. I've attracted really enough good. enough bad karma in my life. I'm just going to be nice to everyone from now on, or at least the rest of today, maybe. Or the podcast. I am really good. Very. I, I finally reached 305. I know people got there a little while ago, but so happy 305. And and I was just saying to, to log uh, before um, that in a really nice event of luck, the gunsmith was doing the 380 engrams. As I hit three eight five, and I just and I had fifteen hundred tokens, and I just cashed half of them in, and just infused up all the weapons I want to use. I'm sitting on nice, everything sitting on three eight five for my weapons now, which is really <laughs> cool. Um, and I can I, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I can start like looking at my armor properly. I'm one of those people that like, like don't really pay attention to stuff until I get to the max level, yeah, and then like I'm now exactly I can like. Same. Now I can start specking. Like in Destiny 1, I didn't worry about specs until like I got max. And I was like, okay, now I'm going to start paying attention to like what I want to run. So that's my next thing. That's good. That's good. Slothy, how have you been, my dear friend? Uh, yeah, I'm all right. Good. <laughs> Great. Let's <laughs> go start the episode. Yeah, right. Right. No, I mean, obviously on for a yarn too. So you've come to the right spot. <laughs> Uh, um, this week, this week's been one of them weeks, mate. It's just been one of them weeks where I've just been getting the uh, getting the other games of the uh, in the in the uh, in, in the old library and giving them a bit of red hot crack more than anything. Good job, good job. I mean, it's good. It's nice to be able to sort of get, you know. I mean, we always go through this bit of a cycle when after after a big Destiny content release, you go you're binging on it for forever, but you've kind of got to step away from it from time to time too. So. That's uh, that's that's good. My week has been productive, and I know that that sounds people will be listening to that going, sure. What do you even do? But <laughs> um, I've set up just quickly so everyone's aware. Um, this week the podcast will transition from SoundCloud to Podbean. Uh, we want to be able to get it in as many places as possible. This is the the audio version I'm talking about. Um, so you'll. It shouldn't disrupt anything. If I've done everything right, it shouldn't disrupt anything. It's on Spotify now if, if Spotify is your preferred platform so you can go and grab it. Uh, but just, you know, get in touch, like follow the Twitter and all that sort of stuff. And please, if there's any issues, let us know straight away. If you if it comes to like Sunday next week and you haven't got an episode, go go looking for me. Come and find me because it means that something's gone wrong. But just uh, the links will be in the description of both the audio and the, the YouTube version. So even if you can't find it on um, on your you know audio platform, hit up YouTube, it'll be there. Or, or I'll share it on the Twitch, on the Twitter, that one, yeah. Anyway, moving on. That's uh, That was my productive week. And I've also ground out a bit of faction rallies, which we're going to talk about later in the in the cast. We're going to have a bit of a discussion. We're going to do the DDU uh, joining our heads and, and maybe do some rethinking of how that might be a little bit more friendly for for everyone but dudes do we want to do we want to hit the uh hit the this week at bunch do we want to do it let's do it yeah right <laughs> take it away so oh my god <laughs> 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 all right well you want to uh, go you want to start it all right kick it off I mean, firstly and foremostly, can we just talk about how fucking thick this frame is that's in the picture of the D-Web, uh, of the T-Web, brother? Like, he is huge. Like, usually the robots <laughs> are quite small, but this motherfucker is... Oh, built, yeah. He the is frame? Built, yeah, he's built like a, 
uh, Brick uh, shit out. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, like not even wrong. Like he's built like a, a rugby player from um, fucking uh, two blues out in Parramatta. Like he's huge. Look at him. Anyway, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we have a roadmap for the coming month, a.k.a. loggers put this in here. Good riddance, supremacy. I know. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it's uh, it's been good stuff, good stuff. So July 3 to 9, Faction Rally, Winner's Week, Mayhem mm-hmm. Crucible Playlist, and Bungie Day, the 7th of the year, 7th. July 10 to 16th, Iron Banana, the... <clears throat> The, the, the steel potassium has returned, um, so we should be <laughs> with that. And then we've got Guardian Con from July 13th and 16th if you are heading down to Tampa to spend time with the friends and family of Destiny down there. Um, good luck if you're flying. Be safe um, if you're traveling over there. Um, if you already live in Tampa, I mean, be safe anyway because I've heard things. I've heard things. Rick lives there. He's weird. It's fine. <laughs> enough to worry about. Um, <laughs> I hope that goes really well. I I feel like it's got so much momentum and I feel like they've done such a crazy job considering the position Destiny was in, you know, following release or the sort of the end of last year. Like, it's going to be interesting. I think, you know. It's good. I mean, there was such grave fears for it and we spoke about it on the cast, like, you know, when everything was sort of in its lull period, how are they going to pull it off? But I think, you know, we're not even at, you know, Forsaken, which is supposedly where... Destiny's going to re- really hit its strides. But I think it's a testament to the community wanting to be a community, right? Like the, mm. the fact that, you know, that and, you know, the hard work of Goth and, and Broman and everyone involved with it. But I've seen more mm. about it this year than I did last year. It's been popping up on, you know, I was on Facebook yeah. the other day and I like I follow a few games publications and stuff on that. And there was a video just about with Broman in it, talking about it and all this yeah. sort of stuff. And I'm like... Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> like, I mean, even if I wasn't a Destiny nut, I'd, I'd still be bumping into it. So, I mean, I, I hope it – I'm sure it will go well. I mean, they've, they've got a few yeah, – yeah, yeah. um, bit of bit of clout now and a bit of experience. So, it's, mm. uh, I'm just going to get off Twitter for a week because otherwise I'll just go green with envy at looking at everyone having a fucking great time. <laughs> yeah, all the selfies having dinner with other content creators and yeah. that kind of stuff. And I was but like, um... I'm just here being swore at by a sloth over the internet. <laughs> 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 but uh, no, Guardian Con should be fine. Like, as I said, be safe if you're flying and if you're new to Tampa, um, try and keep together as a group and all that sort of thing. Not saying that Tampa's dangerous or any stretch of the imagination, but if you've not been there before, you don't want to get lost and end up in some back alley or something like that. So just stay as a group, you know, hang with, <laughs> you know, hang with your friends yeah. and family. Do you know now that you say that, I had a scary moment last time I was in. Yeah, uh, here we fucking go. I went to Guardian Con. Because, <laughs> you know, you, you think about that and I don't know, you're like, uh, um, it was it was Mr. Starberton and, and Vibronium um, that uh, said, "Oh, we're having a house party." I'm like, "Yeah, I'll cool. I'll I'll go to that. Like, I'll have some beers or whatever." And then you know, I ended up into this neighborhood. I'm like. I don't fucking feel safe. <laughs> like, are you sure this is the right address? <laughs> like, getting out of here. I'm like, I don't want to fucking knock at someone's door and be like, hey, are you from Guardian Con? Hello. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is, this is, this is how you lost your kidneys, man. Is, is that what yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah like, yeah. in a bathtub. Yeah. Yeah. And right. my hotel and then, was real big swamps. I'm sure there was like, allig- don't they have heaps of alligators and shit over there? I don't know. Yep. I don't know. Anyway. Yep. All right, and then uh, July 17th to 23, we have update 1.2.3, the 17th to the 7th, and then we've got Final uh, final Faction Rallies of Season 3 and Supremacy Crucible Playlist. Ah. I can't ah. wait. I said, I'll put it, I said it in a tweet, but I can't wait to just ignore the fuck out of that playlist. Of everything in Destiny <laughs> um, 2 that catches shit, it is the one thing that like I genuinely dislike. Everything else I can... I can suffer supremacy. Just get out of my life. <laughs> and then July 24th to 30th, we've got Faction Rally's Winner Week. Hopefully that'll be New Monarchy this time, but, you know, I'm not crossing any crossing any legs or fingers or anything like that. And then we've got the Doubles Crucible playlist. If you're in one of those people who likes to go in with your uh, life partner or hetero life partner or anything like that, then... Uh, Go in there and uh, go in there and and play the games with your your partner or your friend and all that sort of thing. July thirty one, Solstice of Heroes begins. Mm. Now, interesting times ahead. Now, the Crucible playlist update. We'll throw you over to Log because yeah, he I'll doesn't read anything. 
I, I, do, I mean, I, I, I write this whole thing up and, and read very little of it, but that's fine. <laughs> we're going we're we're to break it up. So basically with that, uh, with the update, the 1.2.3 update coming on July 17th, we're going to see a change to the playlist, uh, the Crucible playlist. So what will be happening to Quick Play? We're going to be increasing player config... Can, oh, in, in play, fuck! <laughs> This is why I don't do, read do you want me anything. to read it? <laughs> no, it's fine. Do, do you want me to read <laughs> it? It's fine. Oh in qui- in, uh, 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 increasing, <laughs> increasing player configuration to 6v6 and updating the playlist description, removing supremacy from the pool of available games. Control <laughs> will be updating the score to 150. Uh, the zones will initially be neutral and in clash, it'll be updating the win score to 100. So basically bringing it in line with up in the, up in the score caps so that... You know, it's, they're not quicker games with the 6v6 uh, going on. Uh, competitive, the bomb fuser time in Countdown will be lowered from 40 seconds to 35 seconds. That uh, doesn't impact on me because I don't play it, but if you've got an opinion <laughs> on it. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> the last time I played competitive was in the beta with you guys. <laughs> yeah. Sass might have something this. to say on it, but uh, I think the rest of us are just like, okay. <laughs> okay, see ya. Like it. Um, there will be a full-time Rumble playlist, which I think a lot of people have been calling for for a long time now, and it's good to see it finally added. And Supremacy will be, it says added, but I'm going to change to banished. Supremacy will be banished to the weekly featured playlist, updated to 6v6 and have a win score of 150. So it's not in the quick play rotation anymore, and, and if you haven't sunk, if it hasn't sunk in yet, I really am really happy about that. Um, Crucible ranks will be updated, so players will be able to earn Valor rank from the from additional playlists. Competitive Crucible mm-hmm. Labs, mm-hmm. Iron Banner, and Trials of the Nine. Yeah, um, I think it's a good move. I mean, no matter what you're doing, you're, you're chipping away at that. Uh, joining well, I mean, a game in progress will protect your Valor streak for that game. So basically, if you lose, no penalty. If you win, you win. So. That's, you know, it's not going to get any better than that. It surprised me that it took this long for us to get to the point where they implemented that, but it was obviously more complicated than than first thought. Um, players will be matched according to their glory rank. So that encourages me to go in and get stuck into it. It means that basically if you're just starting out in, in on the competitive side of the fence, you'll be put mm-hmm. against other people who are either just starting out or have not managed to get any further than the just starting out rank, which means they're probably not all that flash. But... I, I don't know. I like it. I think it's a good move and I think it's going to open up the player base a bit to, you know, like I, I color my impressions of these things after speaking to guys like Sass who are into the competitive scene and they'll wait 20 minutes for a game of competitive because that's the only people they can be matched yeah, against. But for don't don't you think that I think the unfortunate thing for like being in Australia and being on PC is yeah. like I think that will impact more people over in the US but I don't know how much it's going to impact – some of the smaller communities that, you know, well, all I know of is is the, the you know the Aussies on PC is probably like one of the one of the smaller sort of competitive PvP scenes, and they you know they're just getting matched with the same dudes all the time. Yeah, it's well, it's like that. Sassy was saying a few weeks ago, like he was coming up against gigs and and God knows who, like the people who are legitimate, you know, really really good players. Um, he was matching up against them all the time during competitive ranks. So, you know, it's just one of those things that happens. So <laughs> the, the the thing, like, I know we've spoken about this before, but the thing that would make this a lot better is if it was all cross-platform. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, yeah I'm just, I'm just going to keep bringing it up <laughs> until Sony... Like, we are, we are not the biggest podcast that are going, but I would absolutely, I would absolutely like them to do... I want, I want to see the CEO of Sony come out and be like, look, we were really against it, but since Sloth said that we should do it, we've changed our mind. We're going <laughs> to go for it. We don't want Sloth to be upset. Um, the glory loss streaks will be retuned to be less punishing over time. So you're going to see an initial sharp decline and then kind of it'll taper off. It's not going to be as, as savage as it was. And all rank streaks will no longer reset once they hit their cap. So you can keep them going indefinitely, which I think is a good thing. Good, good, good. I don't, I don't, I don't play. I don't play enough Crucible to to have 
what I would consider a valid opinion or an opinion people probably want to hear. <laughs> to be honest, so. why, hang on, why you just because you don't play enough doesn't mean that you don't have an opinion, all right, Matt? Just okay, well, that, that, up, okay yeah. well, that's true. So, okay, the competitive stuff is not going to bother me. I don't think it's going to make me want to go into competitive, even with uh, glory rank changes. I'm the only time I'm going to go in there is if I can find a PvP team, but I don't. You know, I'm, I, most of the time I'm choosing to, to play PvP on other games just because I enjoy other games PvP more than, than Destiny. And when I'm on Destiny, I'm doing PvE and, and grinding and, you know, raids. That's just how I like to play the game. So, yeah, fair, fair. That's mm. my opinion. That's good, good changes, you good changes. You, I you mean, do you. <laughs> you do you, bud. All right, so <laughs> Prestige Raid Lairs. Uh, yeah. July 17th, 2018. What you get, ladies and gentlemen, is 400 power weapon. Now, there is Hell a caveat. Yeah. Yes. The only way to get 400 power armor before Forsaken is by participating in the Summer Solstice event. But the only way to get 400 power weapons before Forsaken is by completing Prestige Spire of Stars and Eater of Worlds. Every time that you complete all of the encounters in a Prestige raid that week, you'll be rewarded with a 400 power raid weapon. This can be any raid weapon from Destiny 2, not just the weapons that drop from that raid lair. Wait, um, so, all, so every time you complete all the encounters, so you finish the raid lair and you get one weapon, or is it going to be dropped on every encounter? It, sh it looks to be that the first time you complete the prestige raid lair, Eater of Worlds and Spire of Stars, you get one at 400. One, one so, per lair. One, 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 you complete one all 400 the per lair. Yeah, you need to do all the encounters. You can't just drop in at the the end and go, "Hey, I want to get my weapon. Let me do it," and then grab your, you know, weapon. No, it's if you've got three characters, right. three characters, it is <clears throat> six weapons per week. Okay. Oh yeah. So I didn't read that. Okay. So armor, summer solstice event, weapons, prestige raid layers, per one one weapon per raid layer. Okay. Per so character, wonder, per raid layer. Yes. I wonder if there's going to be a limit on the armor too with the summer solstice. I guess we don't know Quite yet. a possibility, but we don't know yet. How many and weeks then, between that and Forsaken? It's about a month. Hang on, let me... It's, it's, it's about a month. July 31, yep, about a month. I imagine the answer's in that somewhere because I imagine it needs to be needs to be possible to, to have 400, three 400 weapons in a full raid a, a full armor set of 400. I'd expect mm. it's about the same as the weapons are in this, so you're probably going to be looking at getting a chance at two a week if you're doing whatever it is that's required yeah. twice. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. All right. Moving on. All right. And we've got raid armor ornaments. Each prestige raid layer has its own unique set of armor ornaments. I'm excited to see this because the Titan raid layer, uh, <laughs> raid layer stuff is The dung thick. beetle. You, you, thick. You, well, it's a dung beetle cross, per, cross between someone who has been injecting the steroids into their leg for about three and a half years and hasn't stopped. <laughs> you look like a balloon. I don't thick even boy. think it's that. You know the those Michel dudes that just the they get like muscle filler? It's not even real muscle. Yeah. It's just fake shit, like concrete yeah. or whatever. Yeah, it's that. It's just puffed up. Puffed up on nothingness. Mm. Yeah. All right. And we've got exotic masterwork, a catalyst. <coughs> Excuse me. Both raid layers have a masterwork catalyst that can only be found as a rare drop in the activity, which is kind of kind of exciting. Have we like? There doesn't seem to be much information on this, from what I can tell. Um, I wonder. I legitimately wonder what it could do. Um. Yeah, I, I wonder what it could do. Both that's, that's... Raid have a masterwork catalyst can be found only as a rare drop in the activity. Okay. Well, what mm? what guns don't we have catalysts for yet? Oh, God, I don't even know. Dude, I, I haven't paid enough attention to what catalysts are uh, available and not available and which ones I've even got, man. I just play Destiny and if it drops, oh, that's nice. <laughs> I'll get that catalyst and I'll keep uh, grinding for that. Yeah. Mm. I'm not too sure. Do, uh, does does Acreus... I don't think it's currently got a catalyst. Have a catalyst? I hope it's catalyst fucking nerfs it. <laughs> Makes it worse. Makes it worse? Yeah, Dude, imagine know. making it better. What would you do to catalyst? It's already a monster. I think it'd have to Gives be. you it let, lets you lets you um Double fire range. four shots. Four <laughs> shots um in quick succession. 
It just, do, 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 like it, just does a, it just does the Kamehameha fucking warlock, the warlock new super. <laughs> just <laughs> and just just takes up the whole screen. Uh, just as long as you point in the general direction. It just turns you into a just McCree from fucking Overwatch where you just go push, 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 and everyone's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I knew. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> That was. This is what the oh. whole the whole Blizzard fucking Activision Destiny move was about. Just culminating in making Acrius absolutely fucking disgusting. Moving on, sloth. Mm. <laughs> All right. What you do, ladies and gentlemen, each week there is a curated weapon suite and a global activity modifier for Spyro Stars and Eater of Worlds. The weapon set and modifier will be the same across both activities. Curated weapon loadouts are based on weapon archetypes. So over the summer, you might see combinations that require you to equip auto rifle, submachine gun, sniper rifle, or scout rifle, hand cannon, and rocket launchers. So what we've kind of been, well, what, as in like the three of us have been kind of talking about on the cast for a while now in regards to trials, as in a curated weapon set, um, which we have spoken about a few yeah, times. We spoke, but that's, I think we spoke about that in D1, didn't we? That- yeah, 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 like yeah. That. But I mean, this is this is I mean, it's the same thing in the top tier PVE activity. So I'm really interested to see how this this sort of reshapes the game. I mean, we all have our old faithfuls that we kind of keep equipped, and we know what we want for each yeah. encounter. We're sort of being but, forced to think outside that. I, I, I mean, I'm yeah, I think let, this is going to be good. Let me let me let me, let me, let me go shake it up. The, mm, let me read this next part though. Loadouts are now are not locked, so yeah. you can use anything you want, but to get the the extra drop or the extra bit of um, fame, personal fame for yourself, you have to use that load. No, 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 no. Read the next point. <laughs> no, this, the, no the, it, it's, it's saying um, that you can you, change you them can swap within the within prescribed the archetype, gear. archetype. So you, yeah, you, know, yeah, if you yeah, have yeah. to use but an auto like, rifle, you could use, you know, Ghost Primus, but then you could switch to Suros, but yes, you couldn't yeah. switch to a... Um, but it's it's not a cannon. specific weapon is what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sorry. That's what I'm saying. All right. No, you're good. You're good. No, I probably didn't. It's words. Fine. Um, three activity modifiers <laughs> of the raid layers rotate between. Two of these modifiers are brand new and were built from the ground up by the raid team to work in raids. The third is a fan favorite from Destiny to Prism. Fan favorite. <laughs> Fan favorite. I, I could have banked on that reaction from you. Mm. <laughs> <I could have. laughs> fan favorite. Hey, Prism is a fan Look, favorite. If there's one thing that's consistent about the Destiny community is we disagree on everything. So I, I just see oh. fucking. <laughs> I don't I, think listen. you should. You just should never call anything a fan favorite because I guarantee there's like a fifty-fifty of people that fucking hate it and people that love it. <laughs> honestly, honestly, they're probably just they're probably. They're probably just going off numbers of when it was active, when it was an active modifier. But I don't like Prism. I would hundred percent, hundred percent rather um, Blackout than oh. Prism. One hundred percent. Maybe I don't know. Rather Blackout than Prism. Anyway, but you know what? At um, the end of the day, it's there to make things more challenging, and absolutely, it's yeah, certainly yeah, going to sure. do that. So that's fine. <laughs> we we and, can sit we can sit here and talk about which modifiers are, um, are a favorite until we go blue in the face. But you know, like it's it's to add a a more difficult. It, it's to add more difficulty to it. So I'm okay with it. I'm and okay this with is it. this is why I sat in front of the gunsmith. Until I got a 385 auto rifle and then I infused it into. <laughs> I've just had a massive blank. What's the gun you can keep changing between? Hard light. And then I infused it into hard light. So it doesn't matter what's on. I am literally just going to be able to switch. Well, do you actually, really, do you really want to use hard light though? Are you really that bad at inventory management that you need a gun that's all purpose? <laughs> Come on, Matthew. Oh, oh, guys, I thought, oh, right, I'll take you, it back. See, see let, let, us, let, us, let us tell you Fuck something you about Mylan, Mylan mm. Games is that since taking the job at Bungie, he doesn't get enough time to play, play Destiny anymore. <laughs> and since he doesn't have enough time to play Destiny anymore, he just abandons his friends on the Saturday night. He's too Hollywood <laughs> to play Destiny anymore. Oh, in his defense, in his defense... 
Matt's <laughs> always been busy on Saturday nights. That's why we did Thursday. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, this is just a, the continuation of a conversation that we had before we went live about, oh, do we want to raid tonight? And it was like, no, I'm busy. And we're like, oh, you're too busy for us. You're too busy. I'm too Hollywood. <laughs> I hate you guys so much. Yeah, <laughs> it's why you yeah, come here every week. These, Stay humble. <laughs> each of these modifiers is designed to provide guardians with advantages over their enemies when they lean into it. So you got to maybe have to adjust your play style. But if you are one of those people that likes a little bit more of a challenge, if you're the Carolina gamers out there or that like to kill Argos with tethers only or some shit like that, like you know. This could be, you know, word. This could be for you. We we were talking about like um, troll loadouts. Like imagine Eater of Worlds with like just all short range stuff. It's only like shotguns, only sidearms. <laughs> shotguns, sidearms, and what would you put it like? Like you Some know, you're trying guns. to do <laughs> yeah, SMGs, SMG sidearms and shotguns. Imagine you know trying what? to do any damage to him. At some point, it'll probably come around like that. There will be like that's the thing. There will be like mongrel weeks where it's really fucking difficult, and I think that's awesome. I think that's mm. just the luck of the draw nature of it. Is like, oh but my the, god, have you seen the thing over the, this the, week? Yeah, that's when the really hardcore players will jump in and they'll go. Uh, you know what? Let's give it a go. If we get, if we, if we, if we get to it, we get to it. If we fail it, we fail it. Like that would be, that will separate the men from the boys, for lack of a better term. Well, I guess what I'm looking forward to is sort of having like moving away from like my set loadout and yeah. actually looking at some of the other archetypes to see how I would use them and what I should like encouraging me to look at what perks I should have on and like what, how I should be using that archetype. Because once, Wait, you know, I'm very you late doing that before. No, I just, once you no, find like just use some Activision CEO, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, Let him go. No, go on. <laughs> we brought him enough. <laughs> <laughs> what have we said about reinforcing those kind of <laughs> beliefs? Sloth. That's um, fine. You know, there's no intended to move away from like midnight coup right and like Darcy essentially. Yeah. So it'd be nice to must to have some of that challenge. So the goal of these modifiers and loadouts is to change the way you engage with prestige rating each week. The first week, the modifier and the weapon loadout might synergize really well with strategies and armor exotics you've been using for months. Next week, the modifier and armor and uh, correction, the modifier and weapon loadout might push you to explore the encounter in a different way and use exotic different exotic armors. Looking at you, lunar faction boots. Mm-hmm. There will be no changes to Prestige Leviathan Raid. No encounter changes. Modifiers will perform this change. All Prestige activities will be available each week. Good stuff. I, as as much as we as much as I've been giving Matt the elbow throughout all of this, like there's been a lot of a lot of sort of cool changes to people uh, for people who like to make it more difficult on themselves without making it un, unachievable. So I like that. I like that. I think um, it's just going to add depth. I mean, you look at like what where we were at with sort of what was the bloody hell Age of Triumph at the end of D1. Sorry, I just had a complete mental blank. And reasons to go in and do all of that end game content, you know, like I mean, as much as that was a rotating sort of which one was the uh, the, the hardest one each week, this is kind of going to give everyone the opportunity to do that. And it makes the raids the pinnacle of everything once again, which is probably where it should be. Like if you want to be 400, you have yeah. to do the raid. And I, I'm really excited for that. Really excited to be rolling at 400. Yeah. And I mean, that's, mm. that's like, I'll, I'll say this, it'll get me playing more raids because I'm lazy and I like, I get in that thing of like, oh, I don't know if I've got an hour and a half to do this, but I'm going to be wanting to organize it now where instead I could just roll crucible or, you know, anything else to, to, you know, hit those milestones and level up that way. Lol. This is, some, this, is something that, raids. this is something that I saw on Reddit and I thought made a ton of sense. Right. So, you know, why does our little number above our head is the level and not like power level? I've thought that. I've thought Do you know, that for so long. Especially going with like 400. Like I want to see who's 400 in the tower just by looking at them. 
I, when I, that did, I, I have wondered that for so long because it's a, it's only relevant for like the first two hours, right? Did they take that out? No, it's what? still there. It still shows you what level it is. Yeah, but it's your level, not your power level. It's your level, not your power level. Oh, 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 sorry. Yeah, I just had a complete mind fart. It's fine. I just thought Um, it was climaxed. That was weird. (laughs) Don't do that again, ever. (laughs) All right, can we move on, please? Matt, quick, do the collections. Slot's making me uncomfortable. (laughs) Wait, but I think think the only other important thing about the Prestige is that they're all released at the same time, right? Yes. So, you know, uh, some people might be up, upset with with Weld first, but I, I guess the thing is, the other thing is, they're not they're not making any encounters different. They're not going to add, you know, mechanical stuff to the prestige raid layers. Well, so, just imagine adding something more mechanical to something as mechanical as Spire of Stars. Yeah, all it's already, already yeah. that final fight. So the 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 second the, the when you first introduced to that area like that is still like you're, you're like okay i've got to go here stand on this plate I've got to throw a charge to the missiles and then i've got to go up and throw the ball at the thing so the ship knows to fire at that and you know you've got to throw it around then you introduce greed into it and then you introduce more balls into it it's it's many commu- much communication there is it's it can be very difficult and just trying to add more mechanics to that i don't i it would make things for the average Destiny player, well, it'd be quite difficult, for lack of a better term. I mean, do you remember when Age of Triumph rolled around and they introduced the Atheon challenge and how many people groaned at saying, you know, when people said, uh, we're going to do the Atheon challenge and people were like, oh, God, can we just skip it? Oh, my God, because it was just, it was technical. There was a lot of communication. Some people just don't, A, don't want to be thinking that much while playing a game. Um, or B, uh, just don't have the the capacity to be doing one thing, thinking another, and talking about something else. I think things like that, man. You need such a strong leader. Like you need oh, someone absolutely. who who hundred percent knows the knows the ropes. Like even even like looking at Spire Stars now. I I watched Sin. Was it like this Monday or the Monday before when I was off? I sat there for an hour watching him basically run that or run the end of that raid. And I still don't 100% have my head around it. <laughs> like, and he's, he, that's what he does. He fucking teaches people this stuff. I mean, I'm not the brightest pebble in the bunch, so <laughs> it's, it shouldn't reflect on your ability to go and learn it. But still, it's, Absolutely. I mean, I think, I think this is the right way to go about it in that, like, the variation on the encounter is the thing that makes it difficult, more difficult, right? Like, the, whatever that modifier is, you know, I mean, I think the light levels will be increased as well, but the, the, um, the variation on the change like and that's something that you can make work in your favor too i mean so uh, time will tell time will tell but i'm Absolutely. i'm really looking forward to it I'm getting in having a crack and and checking out some weapons that i probably normally wouldn't mm. all right matthew hi collections what have we got bud well <laughs> at the moment i'm a bit derailed by oryx in chat <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to work out why a Trinary Star Cult is there. <sighs> what does it mean? Um, so, yeah, you're going to have to continue with collections yourself, mate. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, because Matthew is in Ratchet, <laughs> our Lord and Saviour. Um, collections coming Fuck. in for Saken. We have collections include every weapon, armor piece, ghost ship, sparrow, emblem, and shader available in year one of Destiny 2. If you have an item in your inventory right now, you can safely discard it and retrieve it from collections in September. This not does not include consumables, so hang on to those if they matter to you. Your collection will begin with every piece of gear that you were holding in inventory or within your vault upon the launch of Warmind. If you had dismantled an item prior to May 8, 2018, it will not be available within your collections. A collection system for the forthcoming random perk rolls is being looked at for the long-term future, but would not be available at the time of Forsaken launch due to increased complexity of managing these items. So what I'm getting from this is that any weapon that you have in your inventory now will not be included in the random perk rolls. It'll just be as it is as you picked it up. Yeah, they've said that's that. what I'm getting. So anything from Don't, year one destiny will have a fixed role. Anything from year two will 
well, not at anything, but I assume that most things will have a random roll uh, and they will not be in this collection system. So, um, you know, anything that you've had past the launch of Warmind, you will have indefinitely now. If it's a shader, you'll be able to go and buy more of it. Uh, if it's, you know, a gun that you had and got rid of or whatever, you know, you can go and go back and get it. But, I mean, it's understandable, I think, that with the coming, with the coming random rolls that, you know, that adds a, lot, a huge layer of complexity to something like this to be able to pull that out. And, you know, like, I don't know how they're going to manage it, manage it, but I have faith that, that in time they'll, they'll get there. Okay, so mm. I can... Everything I've got now, I can dismantle. Yep. Um, and the only sort of note on that is if you dismantled something before Warmind, you won't have it. Yep. Correct. Yeah. Okay. I can dismantle everything. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I've been hoarding <laughs> so many. I've been hoarding so much shit. I'm just going to dismantle everything. I don't, see, I don't know. I don't understand why you hoard so much if you just stick to like three sets of weapons and a <laughs> set of armor. It's, it's, it's a debilitating know, problem. Mate. It's, it's, it's a problem. I yeah. know that. It doesn't make any problem. sense. You know what I why do, do now? Why do I drink I too ask... much alcohol? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> God, can we not start on that? That's a fucking heaps more coffee. <laughs> why do you drink? Oh, fuck. Oh, I don't wow. drink often. It's fine. I don't know why I drink because little law bits get dropped in our podcast strat. <laughs> <It's laughs> <stress>. nowhere. <laughs> All right. Shall we get into the news review, Loge? Yeah. It's, it's going to be uh, – it's a really long one this week, so brace yourself. <laughs> All right. Get ready for it. Destiny 2 is free to play on PlayStation 4 this weekend. That is it. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I mean, there wasn't there wasn't much news going around. We did, I didn't have the benefit of there being some amazing convention where uh, everyone's out talking to journos and stuff about what's coming in Forsaken. So it's a good opportunity if you have friends on PlayStation that, and you play on PlayStation, I suppose, it doesn't do me any good because I'm not going to tell my friends to go and play it on PlayStation and not play with them but it's uh, a good opportunity to to get people to jump into the franchise check it out see what it's all about and um absolutely you know it maybe color their impressions of whether or not they're going to dive in on forsaken so uh i think it's timely i think it's a it's a pretty good time it'd be interesting to see how it works with all the faction rally stuff that's currently going on too i mean if you could blast through the game mm. quick enough like how far mm. you could get but i mean that's i don't know i mean is, is there any other news that anyone else is <laughs> Or am I just being negligent um, of the news? Do you want to talk about that little tidbit that was that was oh, discovered, yeah, Matt? Yeah. That's a bit of news. Yeah, let's let's talk about that. So, um, it was tweeted at me this morning uh, that a, a piece of information came up in someone's Discord, and it involved the Telesto Law Tab, which was released with Curse of Osiris, and if you take the first letter from every word in that card, it spells a sentence, and the sentence reads, Crow untrustworthy desires power. So essentially, if we had picked up on that during Curse of Osiris, um, it basically would have indicated that we knew Prince Aldrin was going to betray us. But way back then. So pretty cool. <laughs> I, I mean, that's one of the things that I love is this is like stuff in the law that we still haven't found and we still haven't worked out and like <laughs> Team Aldrin. Basically, like, you know, we we don't there's, – there's always little bits and pieces to discover in it and that's, I think that's really cool. And, um, you know, if, if you're good with computer programs, can you please just like <laughs> make, a, make a script that like <laughs> – scans every Grimoire card and, and takes the first letter just in case they do something like that in the future. I don't know. I feel like we need something like that. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, someone needs to be checking this more thoroughly. <laughs> if that's, I mean, um, imagine if you'd figured that out. Like, oh, and I've, well, actually, I've, actually, I've got some other law that I can, I've got some other law that I can mention too, yeah. which, which probably won't go into a law video because, um, Look, I'm in the position of like balancing, balancing like the the YouTube side of things and balancing the, the the Bungie side of things. And like when I 
post a video or theory, like people are taking it way too seriously with with like, oh my God, you got info, inside information. But I can 100% say that this is this is public um, and that uh, someone just sent me a link and essentially someone's data mined uh, Cade's journals um, and they have found uh, there are new journal entries that have just been added within the last uh, day, I think, last couple of days, goes into a whole bunch of stuff about uh Cade six and his family i actually haven't read them yet uh but i can i can find a link if people would like to like to see that um the only reason i don't want to make a video about it is i don't want people thinking that i'm confirming these are going to come true because they're sort of a little bit hidden a little bit like it's like making a video on um you know the black spindle catalyst like we sort of know it's there but until it's released it's not really well, canon matt, do you know what i mean matt just do it like legitimately, Dude, I'm not even yeah, being but, an asshole. Like, uh, just just do it because you are in. You are you 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 have a contract for Bungie. You don't talk about it with us. You don't talk about it with your Patreon subs. You don't talk about it on YouTube. If people people are going to come to those conclusions anyway. Yeah, there there is that truth as well. I, I think, yeah, I there, yeah, I, I hear you, man. I'm here. I, I'm just you know. Just like I legitimately, think, man. I, like, I think the I think the first video back shouldn't be something like that. I, I think once people sort of get used to the idea of balancing both roles, I think it, it, it's okay and it's a bit better. But um, prior to that, it's like, hey, I'm not going to release spoilers. Oh, here's a whole bunch of shit that's not like that's like data mine, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, uh, you know, yeah, I can see where you're coming from, Matt. <laughs> What if I can mean? Yeah. You know, like you say that you you're working on the stuff from Bungie, you're working on your YouTube, you just, you know, dogging your mates. <laughs> just just to clarify for everyone watching the stream live or watching it on YouTube, Sloth uh hasn't vanished. He's still here, you can still hear him. He's just out having a lung buster, I think, aren't you, buddy? I am. I have to. Yeah. I, to to explain to the people, like I say this on my own stream because I have to do it on my own stream. But I have to stand up every forty minutes to an hour or so because my back has two um, metal bars in it, and if I sit down for too long, it it ends up affecting me and not being able to walk. So I has to. I have to stand up. So I do apologise about that, guys. So you should. No problem. Mate. Can confirm. Sloth born without a spine. <laughs> <laughs> so that's some other 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 news, other law news, which is I think is pretty cool. I think it's um an exciting time. I mean, this is sort of it seems to be a culmination point, if you know what I mean. Like there's I saw a mention of Andal Brask and all of that and a few different things <laughs> as to maybe how and Cade ended up where he was and whatnot. And I don't want to go into it because I don't want to spoil it if anyone's not wanting to find that sort of stuff out early. But um I, I'm just interested. I think, like as as we were saying, if this is you know this is the end of Cade, we're definitely going to get our Cade's worth out of Forsaken, right? Like there's going to be the flesh out the character and then kill him. I suppose that seems to be the top tier level of sadism, and I'd expect that from Bungie at the moment. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think, um, yeah, th this is going to flesh out his character a little bit more. Uh, with the with the Cade, I imagine the the Cade journals uh, will, will drop, flesh out his character. People will see a little bit more and, and sort of really pump up their fact that he's gonna go down. Oh, I'm not. I'm still not ready for it. I'm still not ready for it. I don't. Yeah, I, know I, 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 st I still can't believe that you're making a hunter. Like legitimately, I can't I believe you're making a hunter. That's how emotional. You I know, am. like after. Dude, I'm making yes. a hunter. I'm making maybe, a hunter. yeah, but you don't have any. You don't have any. You know, class. <laughs> you, 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 you don't. You don't. You, you don't need class you loyalty. Don't I think he just left the end off that yes. sentence, Matt. You, yes, <laughs> you don't have any class loyalty. I was trying to think of the. I was thinking of the uh, the word there, um, but uh, uh, I mean, I like I was emotional, but am I going to go make a hunter? Probably not. You know, like as far as I'm concerned, he probably got himself into a shit situation, and he's a very his character seems like it it it, it just doesn't want to be where it's want to be. So he he goes the all or nothing route. And we've I've spoken about this before. Like he's mm. he goes with the the all or nothing route. He either gets the gets the win or he doesn't. It's the same as what he did in the in the vanilla story. Like he's he's either going to save the universe as as one 
which therefore also turned into his fire team and us. Sloth, you're victim shaming. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Thank you, Darwin's <laughs> All right, well, we're going to do a little bit of a new segment here on the DDU, which is basically where yeah. we get something and we discuss it. We don't actually even – we haven't discussed it beforehand at all. So uh, we're going to dive right in. We haven't, I haven't even thought of a name out of it, of it yet. So it's called DDU Discussion Fest 2018. <laughs> That's the working <laughs> title. <laughs> but we're going to jump in, and after this fine piece of music – we're going to uh, discuss faction rallies and what we think of them and, mm. and where we think they, they could head. Awesome. All right, let's go. All right, hang on. I'm going to, I'm going to change to this because if you've got any, if you're playing the home game, if you're, if you're rocking along on Twitch and you've got any thoughts or anything you want to add, please throw them in and uh, we'll, you know, we'll be reading it, keeping an eye on it. But uh, Beautiful. I... Through the week, I you know I've I've done my fair share of faction rally grinding at you know the, the last two faction rallies, and the more I'm talking to people, the more I'm hearing that people are like, dude, this is fucking, it's not particularly fun and it's a bit exhausting and and that sort of thing, and it's sort of made me think about is this event the right thing for factions? Is it that sort of stuff? So I think we'll what we'll do we'll go around our our little round table here and just discuss what we think is right, what we think is good. If we think anything's not mm-hmm. particularly flash, we'll, uh, you know, as, as we've always said, you know, if you've got something negative to say, say it and then suggest a solution, you know, like try and yeah. try and get it back on the on the positive tilt. So for mine, yeah. I think that factions should be in the game at all times, but mm-hmm. there should still exist a monthly event or however frequently it needs to be that boosts the reputation rank, right? Like boosts your ability to to attain rank for two reasons. One, it's an event and it's exciting, but if you 90% of the time want to be a dead orbit warlock, right, and then you have another character that you haven't leveled or you want to quickly change faction for a week and boost and get a particular piece of gear from another faction, I think that um, it would be a really good way to do that, facilitate that, but also have that you know ad- added character depth that we had in D1. Can you just talk for a sec, Sloth? Hi, how you going? Yeah, good. Thing. Your noise gate was just gone berserk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that, I mean, that's my take on it. I, I kind of miss from factions that um, that sort of constant progression that you used to be able to get from them, whether you were p- participating in anything particular or not. You know, you could go and spend, you know, two nights a week playing Crucible and not really do anything else, and you'd still get faction engrams drop and a little bit of, you know, I mean, I guess once you're in the end game. There's not that it's not about getting uh, higher level stuff. It's about getting the different gear. I just think that I, I honestly I kind of miss that that whole you know the the constant thing. And as it stands right now, I also think that you know you can see what's happening with Future War Cult right now, and that everyone's like, oh, you know, the Future War Cult this week. We've got Ishtar, Ishtar Commander threatening to pack up shop unless Future War Cult win. And like, while it's a cool event, I think that it's kind of like everyone's just going to jump on it because they know it's going to win. And then it's no one's particularly loyal to any particular faction. Yeah. They're just kind of hopping from the one to the one, whichever is the flavor of the month. I am 100% sure that um, next will be New Monarchy because people will be after the sweet business catalyst. I mean, at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, I, I rathered I, I rather the, the D1 faction system because it was a – more, uh, you could get it over a very, very, very long period of time. Yep. Like I, I know I could, I can kind of see what they were going for, as in grind it as as. Uh, Oryx has just thrown up in chat like the original intention was casually hit fifty in the favorite faction over an entire season. The grind to get all three is not ideal. I get that. I do. But I would rather have just had it there all the time, and then have the like the slow the the rate of progression uh, of your XP bar per se progression of your faction right down, and you have to play, you have to play to get the the the, the rank stuff with the possibility of a catalyst. So instead of locking it in for one week for how many weeks per season, I would have rather seeing it lock it in for the entire year or lock it in for a character and you can't choose another character and just that'll get people to grind all three characters. And if, 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 
if they put in a certain number of catalysts per exotic, so let's say Dead Orbit has the Graviton Lance, the, I don't know, Darcy, the something else, and you have the chance to get that over the entire time that you play as Dead Orbit on your character and slow the progression, progression right down, I would have rathered that. I would have rathered that. And I would rather have a different faction all three characters because from D1, my Titan was always new monarchy. I don't have any interest in changing changing um, factions on my Titan. My Titan is new monarchy. Like if I, th- I, 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 think, I think you're probably an exception to that. I, I don't think that... I am an exception to the rule. You're not even... Yeah. I, so I guess, um, right, the... From what we know there, from that little bit of information from from chat, that you know, the intention is not to hit it on you know three times over the seasons, and for people to be chasing like basically switch loyalties and chase the catalyst, right? And so I mm-hmm. think part of that is to do with you know, imagine imagine this um, differently. What what if you got to choose? the catalyst when you got to level 50 didn't matter who you were with, but there was a selection of catalysts that you just choose from people wouldn't then switch between the factions to chase the reward because you would have that opportunity to be with dead orbit. And then you could choose the sunshot catalyst or you could choose the, the, the other catalysts up there, right? You, you wouldn't have to go from dead orbit, get that catalyst, grind it for a week, and then next time it comes up, switch to future wall cult, grind that, get that catalyst. And I guess, like, what I imagined is, like, the the fandom around, like, your class, like, you guys are through and through titans, right? Just fucking, and, you know, you're only now considering, like, making a hunter, and that's, and that's you know, log, and that's blasphemous to fucking do that, right? I, 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 blasphemous. I, blasphemous. Yeah. Blasphemous. blasphemous. <laughs> Right, blasphemous. Right, so, sometimes words are hard. <laughs> blah blah. Right. So, what the fuck is this podcast? <laughs> Sorry, man. Sometimes... Oh man, now I've lost. <laughs> fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, look. Oh. <laughs> I had to do a lot of look. I do a lot of speech therapy when I was when I was younger because well, fine, mate. We're I just giving you shit. I couldn't I, I, speak I, I, properly, and sometimes <laughs> it comes through, especially live. And if you realized how many times I record law videos, the audio takes fucking forever. I don't do that shit in one take. I say the wrong thing, and then I'm like, how do I say that word again? I have to go YouTube, and then I'm like sitting and. If I did the the extra takes from law videos and put it at the end, there'd be a half an hour of recording me going. Bleh, 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 Oi, yeah. I'll do I'll With do it. you one better. Remember before we changed the format of the the podcast, how we used to do the little spoken word intro as the music came in on the recorded versions. I did yeah. one. There was one that I tried to do. It took me an hour and a half to record fifteen seconds of dialogue, and it was basically just. Oh, a little, a little fuck! <laughs> like that was basically what it was. Well, you, let do, let do me re- let me let me finish. And first, the yeah, other yeah, thing yeah. I want to say, I'm gonna let you finish. It's um, if you if you haven't um, watched <laughs> Slayerage's video, the legend himself on YouTube, but Slayerage, yeah. he he did a really good breakdown, and that was actually one of his suggestions. So I want to like make sure that's given credit to to him. But some of the things that I was thinking, right? So. You look at your classes, and without doubt, they've done a really good job of personalities with the classes. Like if someone says to you they're a hunter, without even meeting them in person, you sort of know what kind of personality they have, right? Yeah, and someone yeah. they're like, yeah, they're a PV, they're an arrogant PvP god, right? If someone says they're a titan, you're like, you're right, you're you just you're a thick headed, you like to punch stuff, right? And if someone says you're a warlock, you're like, oh well, you're I don't know, arrogant scholar, right? A, a pompous scholar, right? That, that's sort of how you define oh, yeah, those Actually, classes. while we're discussing this, just quick as an aside, I, I put a tweet out this morning just because I've been thinking about doing a little bit of music stuff and whatever, and I'll, I'll talk about that on another cast. But I said to people, which class would you associate with which genre of music? Just give me a, a destiny class and a genre of music. And aside from Tower saying that they were all best represented by Nickelback, it universally comes back that rock music is a titan. <laughs> And then there's like yes. hip hop is a hunter and like techno is a warlock. 
the, the, the so, there's so much like like and it's, I mean people, yeah, people are obviously people puts people <laughs> yeah. put so much into their classes like they yeah. put so they inject so much of themselves into their classes and I can absolutely see that you know but um <laughs> Matt okay. I, I agree I'm, with I'm, you with you like go 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 let, go, let, go, go let me let me add this last thing right so yeah, yeah. L- let's compare that right Com- compare the way the classes are and and how the game world reinforces that you know through the vanguard uh through the dialogue through the characters everything sort of and and people just migrate to what suits their personality yeah. think about the the factions have law right new monarchy is about having a single sovereign right so if you support new monarchy you support that ideology that that should be the reason you sign up so let, let just completely you know making shit up imagine this imagine if new monarchy won and on the twab, they 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 crowned the leader of new Mon- of the of the last city. Whoever Dude, that'd had be fucking rad. Whoever had the most tokens, right, became the fucking king of new monarchy, right? For faction rally, <laughs> imagine future war cult is all about visions of the future. I don't know. Imagine that you know we we get. Um, People that 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 pledged to, to future war cult get a, um, a a script in the inventory that has a bit of dialogue of upcoming content. I don't know the oh, future. Or, right? or how about yeah, if future or, war cult or, win, Bungie release another trailer with your favorite fucking character dying in it, right? <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, or the future war cult, if they win, they become the the homeless person that walks around the tower screeching about the war that's coming, right? <laughs> You know, um, or uh, and Dead Orbit wants Dead Orbit wants to escape, so you know a, a ship, maybe maybe like a a big like a colony ship, rather than having a little fucking one person ship, they want to get off planet. Like imagine going into your screen, your ship taking up like just a fucking dreadnought ship in the background, like you know, yeah. <laughs> I'm dead orbit. We're getting the fuck out of here. Like that's what's happening, man. Everyone aboard my dreadnought. So like, I, I guess. Some oh. way off. Oh. Oh. Etsy, if Dead Orbit wins, they release they release them from the restraining order, preventing them from going near primary schools. <laughs> and, oh, dude, and savage. The only, thing, the only other thing I was thinking is like long term commitment. Like, imagine if you got new ornaments for the number of seasons that you committed. So. You know, not only are you committing to like an ideology and something sort of happens in the world based on that ideology, but, you know, when people look at you, they're like, they look at Sloth and they're like, okay, he's been supporting new monarchy since day dot. Like, look at his ornament. Like, he's like, you know, he's got top tier ornament, which is a little fucking king crown on his head, right? It's like you just walk around with a crown all the time because that's new monarchy. (laughs) Anyhow, that's I am British. (laughs) I am British. And, and, oh, wow. Yeah, and if you're uh, if you're future war cult, you get like the you know the the fucking the board the, the menu board thing on the front and the back saying the end is nigh, and you can just walk around the town. Well, imagine like an imagine an emote, like imagine a new monarchy emote where you just like I'm the king, and a you, you know a future war cult one where you just go insane from you know visions of the future, and then you know a creepy pedo one for dead orbit. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say anyway. a dead orbit one where you just leave, but <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't my think that one. I don't know. I mean, like, I'm not gonna say that um, where it is right now hasn't been an enormous step in the right direction because it was one of those things that when faction rallies were first around, it was it was a bit meh, right? There was no huge drive to go and do it beyond getting the ornaments and whatever, and like seeing it where it is right now and. You know, like all the craziness that's happened this week with, as I mentioned before, Ishtar Commander saying, you know, unless future war cult win, I'm going to take the app down. And, you know, like all the, all this sort of silliness, like I like it. But it's also something that I think, is, it, you know, there's been a market change, obviously, between D1 and, and D2 with respect to the factions. And I think it's the one of those things that it's, it's just another layer of depth to your character if you can, like, really ascribe to a particular uh, particular faction. I mean, I've been dead orbit since day dot and I don't plan on changing, but that's really just because it's black. So maybe I should look a bit further into yeah. it. <laughs> I, I think I think I think they should should be like double down on ornaments um, and ongoing loyalty and maybe a little bit of like um, 
integration in gameplay or consequence sort of in the universe to sort of reinforce that there's sort of consequence for like pledging to each each one. Yeah, I think so. I think well, so. I, like to improve on the faction rallies, I, I would like to see like I think I've I think I've rem- I think I've said this before, but do you like if you've played Halo four and five, I think Warzone were introduced. Um, but like a Warzone type of situation, a PVE VP event, which could be very, very muchly Gambit, but um, a, a so you load in with so if you're do, doing the solo grind thing, and if you want to opt into the faction rally, you only go into let's say Gambit with faction rally with with uh, new monarchy. So for me, I will go in with only new monarchy people. I know this is probably like getting well into the whole making it difficult for the match the tech, and stuff, for the yeah. matchmaking and all that sort of thing. But um, imagine that that would be kind of cool. Like if you wanted to say, all right, f- in, unless you're in a fire team, you will go in as new monarchy, and you are you have the the option or you have the ability to earn double, triple tokens if you win your gambit run through as a new monarchy team. Yeah, I mean, I want to uh, see. Not, a new, not, I want to see a faction war with like swords only and like <laughs> dead orbit versus new monarchy and have like. <laughs> Payoffs, you know, like imagine that. That'd be so funny. That that, that would be cool. That would be cool. But it's uh, anyway. That that's that's my question again. Now, a few a, a few people have said, and this isn't aimed at anybody in the chat. This is actually on Twitter and all that sort of thing. Um, people are saying that now that Cade's gone, there's no connection to the story. There's no loyalty to any of the other characters or anything like that. That's a very heavy comment to make. As I, 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 Kate's a good character for sure. Kate is a great character for sure, but is he the be all end all of Destiny? Not particularly. I, I actually think that um, personally, I think Zavala is quite a was it was is quite a strong character. Um, they they all are. I just think I think it's hard to shine when there's someone. So charismatic as as Kate, I do you think it's it's very charismatic? But I think I think that's a. It comes down to the writing in the vanilla story. He was the funny guy. He was Mm -hmm. in all the trailers. Like he was in the 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 first trailer and then the trailer when he was talking to the um talking to the sweeper bot and all that sort of uh, yeah the sweeper bot when the half the bar was missing. Like he was a very well well written character, and I'm not saying that the other voice actors who did the voice acting in Destiny didn't do such a good job. But Nathan Fillion has always always been a very um a very good character. Uh, sorry, a very good actor and he plays those characters well. Mm. Um getting rid of him draws an emotional attachment. Uh it it, it draws an emotional attachment uh, to to get people involved back in the story and yeah I mean if you don't if you don't think there's any characters there that are as good as Cade well I mean that's your take on it I'm not I'm not going to try but and change I, I your think, mind I think Forsaken's going to fix well do a better job of that I, I really do I think the direction it's going I think from I'll, what we've seen I'll say what my my thought process around it is and I'm like it's basically this if they're prepared to kill off Cade. They've got to have a hell of a lot of fucking faith in where they're going after that. And for me, just the fact that they've got the nuts to do that is a huge, you know, it's a reason to believe. <laughs> the balls. Yeah, I think so. Um, we'll go back to uh, dear Sir Oryx's question from a little while ago. I think it's a, I mean, without notice, we'll, we'll do our best to throw, throw some ideas together. But gents, if you could imagine a monthly PVE event, Parallel to Iron Banner, what would it be? Like a, a cyclical PVE event. I'm going to just, I'll That's, go first because I've had a little bit of yeah, yeah, yeah. think yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah. And it might yeah. be shit. I'm not going to say that this is a particularly good idea, but I've spoken to a lot of guys, you know, especially when we're doing escalation protocol runs around that kind of. Um, the, the the bigger groups like the nine yep. nine man fire teams, I was thinking the exact the nine man thing. fire teams. But like maybe on each planet there is like an area where it becomes you know like you look at up near where Anna Bray is on Mars. 
and it becomes this kind of arena where you're moving around this arena and facing different enemies. If there was something that, if I was going to make a PVE event, it would be based around something like that, where it's a, a bigger team thing and it's getting in and kind of like, it has that kind of like gladiatorial arena vibe to it. I mean, that's the thing about Esky Protocol is that like, even when you're just passing through an area, if you come across a group, you can A, participate or B, just go like, holy crap, these guys are fighting the last dude. And just watch. There's an element of spectatorship to it. I think that that I'd like to see that part of it doubled down on, like that that kind of less less serious um, PVE, which we, we which we get with the raids, but more like casual arena based kind of a PVP PVE. Yeah, exercise, I hear you. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Someone mm. someone mentioned like uh, mayhem mayhem strikes, and I think like it would be great to daybreak just... strikes. I've already got them now. But but like I mean like um I mean with like a PVE content where you've just like got heaps of super all the time. And someone actually brought up like with faction rallies with the renowned system. I saw this in the comment that rather than like making it harder, which is fine, like I think it's good to make it hard and good to grind, but people sort of found it quite, you know difficult to get not difficult but like difficult emotionally to get through like oh i'm getting a bit bored like imagine if when you got renowned you were much more of a glass cannon like you get your super back really quick so you could just chain supers but you know you might get one shot by something so like at least you're like goofing around with your super a lot more and and you can you know blitz through things and have a lot of a ton of fun with it Um, risk versus reward more or less yeah like you, like glass cannon, yeah, you could be the most powerful thing going, but you know, a, a dreg could come up and slap you open palm yeah. across the face, and yeah. you, your, your jaw will break. You know, like yeah. that's, I'm okay with that. I'm okay but with I, being a glass cannon. I, w- I would like, yeah, like like I think what Escalation Protocol showed is people like those big groups, man. We haven't really had mm. big groups like that in PVE, and something that gave an opportunity to like really band together as a big group would be pretty insane like yeah, it's, it's just so much fun to have that many people just throwing throwing well, around about, supers and just like, well, it makes it heaps more it forgiving too bosses. like it makes it heaps yeah. more forgiving in that like if you're not particular you know it's no one's fault if you're if you're log that's having a few drinks and might not be the most coordinated individual right now <laughs> like it's not like a raid where you know if you're not on the pace you're letting your team down it's kind of like you know it might be a little bit harder but it won't really make a difference and it's it's a, like kind of a more casual thing i don't know how you market like how you'd promote that event <laughs> like go hey guess what it's fucking lazy pve week for people who want to band up and kill things easily but i don't know <laughs> that'd be my that'd be See, i think that's the most fun i've had in pve in ages is escalation protocol well in in regards to escalation protocol i agree with a number of people in the a number of people in the chat aka uh, i.e a k-law at the moment you know like instead of nerfing um ep so like the the power level has gone down i would like to see the power level go back up and open up to nine man and if you want to do a prestige uh, ep you can get nine people in there and you can work your ass off and you can make it as hard as you want to be uh, hard as hard as it you want it to be rather not as hard mm. as you want to be that's on a different website um <laughs> But ah, dick I, jokes. I would also, I would also like. I I know I know that he said you know not prison of elders, but I think prison of elders would be, uh, Queen's would, wrath. <laughs> sorry, not Queen's wrath, but um, prison of elders. That would be cool if you could do a three man, a six man, a nine man prison of elders, and just like if you ha- only have six, guess what? You only do six, and you do like let's say six rounds of the hardest bosses for six people to do like prison of elders is a great idea i just don't think it was as well executed as it could have been mm. again i'm no game developer i'm no i'm no game developer no game director i'm just coming this at, at purely from someone who plays destiny mm. I and mean, one uh, of the things that that i would like to see is there's so many beautiful environments that i just don't feel get the attention they deserve because the activity doesn't match it maybe do you know what i mean like like lost sectors before faction rally who went into lost sectors and there's like freaking amazing essentially dungeons right mm. and 
that I just never explored. So, like, is there a PVE activity that can help with that? And I guess faction rallies was sort of one way to, to try to do that and make that, you know, encourage that exploration. Um, that's something that I've always, like, when I first picked up Destiny, I've always wanted to do a little bit more of, um, but haven't really found that to be rewards. And I, and I guess like some of the explorations, like with collectibles, you know, like to get the world line zero does a good job of that. The, um, to get touch of malice and taking King was a good job of that, you know, to explore the dreadnought and do that kind of thing. But I wonder if there would be a event, um, you know, monthly that encourage you to explore a different area or pay a bit more attention to some of the environmental cues. I agree, yeah. man. And I think the, well, the, the problem with Faction Rally right now is that there's kind of a few really good runs for doing Faction Rally grinding and you end up basically doing the same public event and same same lost sector over and over again because that's how you yeah. can do it as quickly as possible. Where, yeah. like, I, I kind of see, like, the, I can see lost sectors being used in a different way where, you know, you bring up the, as, as Chris brought up, the, the Queen's, the what's the bloody thing to... Queen's, Queen's Wrath. Wrath bounties. If there was like a bounty where it was like, you know what? Here's the bounty. You go and get it. Go and get this dude. You've got this, this go to this lost sector and defeat this guy. And when you get there, he's going to be twice as tough as he normally is because you've got the bounty because it's all instanced mm. anyway. Then, mm. I mean, I'd be in for that. I like the idea of going out and hunting things down. But Yeah. yeah. And, I, and you know what? I think, I think that's what Forsaken is going to get really right because yeah. I think this idea of bounty hunting, like I feel like they've obviously given that a lot of thought, like how do we get people like to go out there and, and do stuff? And they've, they've given you the motivation with Cade. And then you've got this opportunity to go and hunt down these fallen and you can do them in any order you want. And there's likely going to be, you know, um, blockades in regards to your power level. And there's going to be something you need to come back and revisit. Like, I feel like that, that to me is like that, dark soul exploration like to stumble into an area and go fuck i don't want to be here i'm getting smashed there's no point in me being here get out of this dungeon i'm going to come back later and and then wipe the floor with everything um like i like that kind of exploration a lot mm. so a question from uh governor thank you very much i remember governor. that for two weeks before dlc launch in d1 uh it was pre precursor events like key farming before house of wolves uh, Buds and I would go uh, to the Vault of Glass raid and would hunt, uh, all six would hunt for keys. A, I miss pre-DLC events and uh, having a, a min of a four-man fire team for patrols would be great. So the the pre-event for Forsaken seems to be the Summer Solstice event with the 400, um, 400 armor and the 400 power weapons, two per character per week. Um, four-man patrols... If they were like to tie in with what you were saying there before, Matt, to go into stumble into an area and go, holy shit, this is going to wipe the floor with me. Um, I would absolutely, I would absolutely be down with four to six man patrols. Um, but the only issue with that is, is that I would like them to instant six man patrols away from three man patrols. So you are always going to be versing enemies that take multiple people to kill. If that makes sense, I like if you wanted to go in there and solo it and be be your you know your dado's destiny and go and um, solo the entire six man patrol area with uh, at light level four hundred and you've got uh, sorry power level four hundred you've got power level four hundred and thirty enemies around, I would absolutely absolutely be down for that a hundred percent. It would add a if you could hunt the bounties, the, the what seems to be bounties in Forsaken as a six-man fire team at a higher power level to make it as difficult as you want, I would be a hundred percent down for that. Or, um, you know, with the 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 card, of the the Nightfall card, where you could drop your power level, you could handicap yourself. Yep. Mm. That would be cool too. If we could have six-man fire teams and the leader puts on a fire, uh, go heroic patrol. Let's drop everyone's. Um, power level down to 330 in a 380 area and you've all got to you you've got to absolutely kill it and have that as an instanced area that would be mm. cool I, I i would be down for that you can mm. make it as hard or as easy as you want that actually that actually i, I would actually prefer that to what i said before 
Yeah. <laughs> I know we're, we're sort of like jumping. Just, the, let's just jumping mentally m- imagine things for the game. <laughs> well, no, no, no. But like, no, no. I think we've got like some, lots of really good questions in chat and suggestions at the moment. So we might as well roll with some of that. Let's go. And mm. um, Solstice of Heroes. Right. I, I, this is sort of goes from Governor's question with, um, you know, the pre, the, the the little mini release prior to the DLC releasing, right? And, you know, you just said we've got this solstice of heroes. And I have, Mr. Dunner Games put this in chat, and I have seen this sort of floating around with, yeah, I think it has something to do with Callus. I mean, obviously the prestige raids are coming out at the same time. And this symbol at the moment does seem to match like a callous type of uh, symbol you know it's like this sun symbol which is pretty um symbolic with what we see in the leviathan um and so i do wonder whether we might see some exploration with shadows of callous and um him in the solstice of heroes which would be pretty cool i didn't maybe, even maybe make that connection I didn't even make that connection. Sorry, Log. Yeah, that's that's cool as frick. All right, maybe, yeah, I didn't see I didn't make that connection at all. Yeah, I mean, maybe that connection is that instead of seeing a precursor event, we're seeing a kind of end to the, the callus, right? Like maybe this mm, is like a mm. to, to wrap things up a little bit and then yeah. and then and then we transition into Forsaken, which takes the the overarching story of the franchise in a completely different direction with, you know, really new big bads, new enemies, all that sort of stuff out on the reef. Good. And it wraps up Callus into a, I'm not going to say into a nice little package, but, you know, it puts some finality to that segment of D2. Yeah. D- D- I don't know. And it'll be, it'll be I know interesting. Someone that knows. To... <laughs> <laughs> it'll be an interesting way of like, because um, I think there's always concern with, with putting conclusions into the end of raids because, you know, not everyone gets the opportunity to complete the raid. So, you know, you put a conclusion in there and then people don't see that conclusion. But be interesting for, like, to consider raids like the middle of a story. You know, the the intro is the campaign, the raid is the middle, and then the capstone or the conclusion is like a, you know, an, a solstice event before another DLC comes out. Um so people can still see some of the flow. And even if you haven't completed the raid, but maybe you've gone into it, you sort of understand a little bit about what's happening there. And then you sort of get a little bit of a conclusion or a little bit of a summary before going on to the next chapter. Absolutely. So, um, Governor, again, thank you for all these, like, they're just thought process. Thank you for um, text uh, putting them in chat. Um, but what if we completed all the raids on the Leviathan and became a patrollable area? Oh, that would get be... Out. Oh. That would, no, but like, like we've we've done all this good stuff for Callus. Oh, I know. I'm, I agree. I think it's a great idea. Like, um, <laughs> what if it? What if it was a social space slash patrollable area? What if like we... this thing is supposed to be huge, like Planet Eater, bigger than the bigger than the Dreadnought, all that sort of thing? What if we could go like all around and like it, it would it became part of like all right, Callus. He promised us help. He promised us showing us power and this, that, and the other. I like. I might be paraphrasing it. Well, I definitely am paraphrasing the word. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure Callus doesn't say this, that, and the other. <laughs> no, but like, you, know, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. That would be a pretty yeah, cool yeah. social space to see. Obviously, not in Forsaken because Forsaken is is more or less done by the looks of things. No, well, that, no, but that's exactly what they're hinting at in Forsaken. They're having this mm. end game area that is linked to the raid somehow. We don't really know yet. Like yeah, that's. Yeah, yeah. That's you know I think that's what we're we're going to see in Forsaken. There's something like that, some really nice integration between mm-hmm. raid content and story. That, that if, just that just gives me a little bit of a tickle, like right here. What um, if, um, Slothy, uh, hear the, me out. The, what yeah, if yeah. the resolution to all of this is that Callus goes, all right, you can have the Leviathan, and then it goes, ding. <laughs> Exotic ship. <laughs> Leviathan. <laughs> what? And your he... fucking ghost. Your ghost just sucks up the Leviathan. Is that yeah, what you're yeah. <laughs> And then, um, and then next time you're playing PvP with your buddies, you can't even see what map you're flying into for all these giant fucking cosmic fish everywhere. It sounds great. <laughs> no, but uh, I would. <laughs> You've completely fucking derailed my thought process there. That's Thanks. what I'm here for. I don't, um, know, I don't know why else I'm here. 
But no, it, it, it gives me a tickle right under here on set to see w- what the the raid slash patrol area is in Forsaken. I, I'm very very excited to see what that is. Um, the whole gunslinger hunting down the killers of Cade and this, that, and the other with the barons and all that sort of thing, that's exciting times. And I kind of hope, maybe hope, maybe that it is going to be something very Prison of Elders-ish, maybe on the Leviathan. Maybe Callus has set challenges for us on the Leviathan to hunt down his what, – what, what, what is he, his group called, Matt? Shadows like he, of he, Callus. Shadows of Callus, yeah, like uh, hunting yeah. hunting them down or put pitching, well, pitching us against them on the Leviathan as some sort of Romanesque games. Well, the thing is, a lot of the Shadows already died. A lot of the Shadows of Callus already died when they um, tried to kill Gol uh, after Callus was exiled. But I'm pretty sure there's a there's a bunch. Those, the Shadows that died were part of a team... Uh, that we haven't – it's like species we haven't seen before, but there's also ones like Fallen and that that we have seen. So mm. I don't know if um, – I mean, I, I just want – I want Callus to like uh, like formally offer us a position. Like it's all in the – it's all in the law tabs and everything, you know, to be a – to join his army. Um, so I think it would be, be cool to sort of see some of that. What if that's, the, resi- what if that's the resolution to it, but where he just goes, all right, well, do you want to join? And you go, no, nah. thank you. And he goes, all right, well, <laughs> I'm off. No, no, but that would mean, no, no, we, we wouldn't say that. The ghost would look at us and we would look at the ghost and then go, <laughs> and then the ghost would go, no, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> and then we would leave. We'll mime it to our ghost. <laughs> like charades. <laughs> 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 How the fuck did we even get to this point? I this don't is pretty fun. I like this. I like just making yeah, shit man. up. <laughs> but uh, this thing is that until Forsaken drops, like we can sit here and and think about and 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 all that sort of thing. Like we can sit here and talk shit and think about what would come, but we just don't know. And I'm very excited that we don't know. What the fuck are you giggling at? Like uh, c- captions read mimes to ghost. <laughs> <laughs> captions read shrugs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, oh. All right. Well, if, if, well, we might do a, one last round of questions. If anyone's got anything really, really important they want to ask, we'll go for it. But I, don't, I just think that, like, I mean, we're obviously all very enthusiastic dudes about <laughs> about Destiny and where it's going, and there is nothing I love more than jumping in and, and spitballing ideas and shit like this. Like, this is basically what me and Ed do whenever I stream, <laughs> think up random ways to change things and, you know, make things just ridiculous and crazy. But um, I think that just being able to... I, I, honestly, I, th- I don't think it's something that we'll do every week where we discuss a particular facet of the game and w- how, like, what we would do to it or anything like that because at the end of the day, we have no idea what we're talking about. It's just purely from a pan- uh, fan perspective. But I think um, I think it, I think it's been good to sort of... I think we all sort of really kind of came to the same conclusion anyway, right, that that being able to invest more in, in like, the, the faction itself would be better and if it was around longer, that would be even better again. Mm. Yeah, good. Thanks, guys. Absolutely. I mean, I, <laughs> no, it, it makes perfect sense, mate. You're, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, I think um, when it comes to feedback, you know, it's, I don't think it's something that you you want to do all the time, like that you, you want to constantly give because it doesn't matter, like, how tolerant you are to receiving feedback, you know, like it, it can get old. Do you know what I mean? Does that yeah, make yeah. sense? Like, yeah, yeah. you know, after after a while, there's only so much like feedback you can take in and be like, okay, guys, I get the fucking point. Like, you know, we we know what needs to be done. We, need, we just need to get it done now. You know, so that, I think you know, with, with the perpetual and that thing. Kind of thing, it's a perpetual yeah. thing. There's always going to be something that we can go. Oh well, you know, like I think yeah. that yeah, we'll, we'll keep a lid on it to an extent. But it's been it's been a fun once off, or maybe yeah. infrequent little thing. Well, let, Less less once off, but infrequently. Yes, spitballing is fun, but sometimes it doesn't get anything done. 
Man, we don't get but anything done. If you do here have anyway. any questions, <laughs> we, we, we don't no, get anything done anyway. <laughs> if you have any burning questions, theories, statements, or anything of the other, please let us know. Uh, either at us on Twitter uh, at ddu underscore podcast at Mylan Games at Log Power Slave or at Real Time Sloth. If you have any uh, really really burning questions and you don't have access to any of those platforms or any of those pages, rather, chuck them in the YouTube comments down below. Uh, make sure you hit that button for the subscribe and hit the bell so you know when we actually upload. Log only post once a week, but you know, you know. If I might YouTube do something. Being YouTube. I might do something midweek this week just because of the transition between podcast yeah. platforms. But yeah, and just just to recap on that, we have switched over to Podbean. Our podcast is now available on Spotify. Search for us, uh, Destiny Down Under. Uh, you'll see what we what you see on Twitch or uh, Twitter. You'll see our little logo there. Um, so if you want to listen to that, give it a thumbs up on Spotify as well. Thank you to our audio only listeners as well. Sometimes it is very difficult to keep a track of our less than um, Vocal. cohesive conversation. <laughs> um, uh, but thank you, thank you very much, all of you, for hanging out, um, guys who come in into the Twitch chat. Thank you very much for your questions. Um, for your theories and just the spitballing and and thank you for showing up guys it's really really awesome thank you very much um yeah next week uh same time same place uh matt may be he may not he's very hollywood these days he's time to <laughs> <laughs> sometimes he may show up sometimes he's don't um but if he no, does turn up very- he'll be wearing be wearing very dark sunglasses so no one recognizes mm-hmm. him <laughs> Have you got anything you want to say in response before we go? Uh, I would. I would like to say no. <laughs> I don't, not, no, not I'm, to no. that, but I. I should be releasing a video, a law video this this week sometime. So keep a look out. So make, make sure you check that out if you're not following Mylan Games on YouTube. YouTube.com forward slash Mylan Games puts out law stuff sometimes. Um, but uh, no, he's working very hard, and I do give him a lot of shtick. But I'm very fucking proud of him. So make sure <laughs> that you go and check him out, please. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's been an absolute pleasure. We have been the Destiny Down Under podcast. Please stand by if you're in the Twitch chat for a raid. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Bye. Also, join the Discord <laughs> anyway. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Peace.